Okay, so in this tutorial I'm setting a blank scene. I'm just going to go through a couple of ways that we can create this spine for this character. So the first way is the IK spline tool, which we're going to go into. So if I just pop to the front view, and I'll just create a few joints in a straight line. And the IK spline tool basically um, creates a curve down the middle of the spine, and an IK um, handle and what we're going to do is it uses the curve to deform these joints so as we deform the curve these joints follow along with the curve so we can get the IK spline by going to skeleton IK spline handle tool and we'll just go to the options and I'll just reset the options so a couple of options in here um, number of spans is the main thing if you've got quite a long spine you might want to use more spans because essentially we're going to be deforming the curve in here so increasing the number of spans is going to give us more spans to work with, more CVs to work with. Um, we can take off auto parent. So what this usually does is it automatically parents that curve inside your Maya scene, like your outliner. And because we're using like a character node, we've got all these little groups. We know where things need to go. We want to pair it ourselves. So we just take auto parent off. And the same with auto create curve if you use auto create curve you click on the start and the end joint it'll create a curve straight between those two so well between all these joints so it's like an automatic curve but if you want to use your own curve you can go ahead and use that and select that once you're using this tool and uncheck auto create curve which will mean it'll use the curve you've created so if you've got some sort of complicated spine and you want specific CVs to be in a certain area you can use the curve that you've created instead of auto creating it but for this I'm just going to auto create it so we click on the start joint and the end joint and if we go to the outliner over here we can see it's created IK handle and a curve so what this means is so I'll just unselect joints in the selection handle and with the curve selected I'll just right click and go to CVs and this means as we move these CVs about, we're deforming the curve, which in turn you can see is deforming those joints. So we can get a nice uh, smooth spine going on. Now the idea of this is um, we can have use clusters on these joints, or what I tend to prefer is we could actually create joints. So I'm just going to increase the radius of these and just vert snap into the start and end of this and I'll turn on joint selection again select these two joints shift select the curve and just go to skin bind skin smooth bind and I'll just reset the settings and just put it to selected joints and hit apply and this means we can actually skin um, joints to curves so this curve is now being skinned with these two joints and that means as we move these two joints we're moving the curve which in turn moves this joint chain through the spline IK. So you can see here, moving this top joint and rotating it, we can now get these nice sort of spine shapes that we want. The only problem with the spline IKs is it's got a nice twist in the Z, a nice twist in the X, but when we come to the Y axis, there's no twisting in there and you can set this up, so if we select the IK handle, go to the attribute editor enable twist control, there's ways in here that, here that we can use object rotations and use different things to control the twist of the spine but generally it's there's other solvers out there which we're going to go into in a sec which are generally better at setting up that twist so for this reason we're probably going to avoid the spline IK for this tutorial and another good reason to avoid the spline IK with cartoony character is the stretchiness, squash and stretch, so if we move this down you can see the joints are staying the same length and there's a way that you can set up the squash and stretch so what we do is pretty much similar to the last tutorial setting up the squash and stretch for the arms what we actually do is instead of using a di distance dimension tool we use the length of this curve in here so there's a way of enabling the history on this curve so we can see the actual length of this curve 
and use that to drive the spine's squash and stretch. But there's a, there's a little problem with the spline IK squash and stretch that when you've got um, a spine with about five joints or less, as you start to squash and stretch, the top joint starts to pop about, which can lead to the animation not looking as good. So you can fix that by using more joints, but in this tutorial we're just going to go through using the ribbon uh, spine setup. So for that I'm just going to go to a blank scene again. And the idea of a ribbon is we're going to use a, n a NURB surface. So I'm just going to create a surface. I'll snap it in the grid. And actually if we just double click the surface, you can see I've, I've set the surface degrees to cubic, so three. Um, then you've U and V patches, so I've set the U to 1 and the V to 5, and then the width to 1 and 5 and along the Z. But you can create any type of nerve surface you want for your custom spine. So, for this, what this means is if we look in the CV, at the CVs of this object, we've got five spans going up and four going down. So, what we actually want to do, because it's a cubic surface, it's got four going down along each of these coming down. So what we actually want to do here is, um, much like the spline IK, we, we're just interested in the Y, we just want a series of joints moving up in the Y, or if we had this along the arm or something, or down the back of the snail character, we just want it going up this surface basically. So having this many CVs across the X, uh, we don't really need them. So what we want to do is rebuild this surface. So if we go to Surfaces, Edit NURBS, and Rebuild Surface. And I'll just reset the settings. And we want to change the U direction, I think. But we can always check that later on. And all I want to do is change it to a linear. I'll just undo that. I think we want to set this to 1, set this to 5, and hit apply. We can see there, so all we're doing here is um, whichever direction you chose when creating this surface, you can choose the U, or if you chose the V. So the direction that we want to get rid of, so we want to edit just the U. So just by setting it to U, we're only changing the U direction. If you want to set it to V, if you have V, set it to V. And then any settings down here are only going to apply to the U. So it says number of spans for U and V, but it's, it's just going to ignore this value here. And we just want to set them to 1, and we want to set it to linear. So because it was cubic, it was adding those CVs in between. But so setting it to linear now means we've only got one set of CVs on one side and one on the other which is what we want. So basically it's sim quite similar to the IK spline tool, tool. Instead of a curve we're using the NURB surface to rotate the joints and the advantage of that is a NURB surface is a surface. It has surface normals. So the normals can drive the direction of those joints whereas a curve it's linear. It's It doesn't have that third dimension. It doesn't have a normal surface bouncing off it. So what we're actually going to do here is add um, a hair system to it. So we're adding follicles to this. Now, um, if you've never used these before, it might seem a bit over the top or it might seem a bit drastic using hair dynamics. But all we're interested in creating is basically the hair system creates a follicle on a surface and then it has the dynamic hair coming out of it. And we're not interested in that dy dynamic hair. We're going to get rid of that. We're just interested in the follicle, which is basically it welds a point onto this surface that we can then add joints to. So all I'm going to do is go to Dynamics and if you're using Maya 2013 it will be N hair, if you're using previous versions it will just be normal hair but they still, they both use a, s a similar sort of method and after we've deleted the bits we don't want they're still using the same uh, follicles so there should be no difference really and all the tools are pretty much the same. So if we just go to any hair, create hair, go to the option box, and in here what we want to do, reset settings, 
we'll switch this to uh, NURBS curves, so we'll create as less stuff that we need to delete. We'll set the U count to 1, set the V count to 5, because we've got 5 surfaces along here, we want 5 points, and we just want 1, so all of them going down in a straight line. And then we can leave the rest as the default settings, we're just interested in the, these two values really. We'll just hit apply. And we can hit close. So that's created uh, the hair system. And if you're using Maya 2013, it'll create a nucleus system. But all we're interested in here is the follicle. So if we just quickly open up the out outliner, we're going to select the hair system, we we'll select the nucleus one, just hit delete so we don't need them. Select the output curves group, hit delete, don't need them. I'm just going to expand all these groups and what we're interested in here is these follicles so I'm just going to select every curve group hit delete and just hit shift P on these follicles and just delete the hair system group so in the end up all we have is these follicles so if we actually look at these they're just little red points with a little red line pointing out towards the normal of this surface so if I actually start to deform this, much like the IK spline, we're deforming the curve, we're deforming the nerve surface. The other difference here is, as we deform this, it might not show up well on the recording because they, they are quite small. But we can see that that little red line is pointing out to the direction of this surface. So as we deform it, it's pointing up here. It's not pointing straight forward. It's not keeping. It's, it's actually following the surface. So what we can do now is I'm just going to go and create some joints. So we had five follicles so I'm just hit control D four times to create five joints and then all we can do is just drag and drop these so each follicle has a joint. So we're just parenting these to each follicle. And because we parented them can now select the joints and just put zeros in the translates so it matches their parent which is the follicle and with these joints I'm just going to select them again and go to display transform display local rotative axes and I'm just going to deform this surface and you can see here so if I just select these two these four CVs and hit B with the move tool to, or hold B, middle mouse click and drag to get the soft select tool so we've got like a fall off. You can see here as I twist this we're getting that nice twist from top to bottom so unlike the spline IK you can see here that we're getting that really nice twist, that Z axis facing forward and smoothly bending all the way to the top the same in every other axis we can get this really nice twisting going on and that's with pretty much no effort so the advantage of this is it's really easy to set up but also because it's a nerve surface you can see just moving this about we instantly have the squash and stretch set up so there's no need to add any squash and stretch systems in there we're just going to be using the surface and deforming it and the same way that we created those main controls for the IK tool, the spline IK sorry, I'm just going to duplicate a couple of joints, the top and bottom joint I'm going to select them and hit shift P to get them out of the follicles and again we can use these to drive the nerve surface so selecting these two joints, select the surface in animations, we'll go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind I'll just use the default options and you can see now we're getting what we want. We can use these joints to so these joints are going to be constrained to different controls so as the animator moves the control curve it's going to move this joint which in turn moves the surface which then moves the follicles which then moves these joints so these actual joints on the nerve surface are the ones we're going to use for skinning these joints here will not be used to skin to the character they're only skinned to this nerve surface and the advantage of this as well is we can use the paint weights tool 
and we can actually edit the weights of these so it's really really flexible so if we wanted the top to have more of control over the whole spine we could go and go in and just paint that in there or remove that from there so it, it's a really flexible way to set up the spine so you can see here now we're just only twisting the top so over the next tutorials we're going to use this this basic method of having the nerve surface create this sort of uh, deformation for the spine so we're going to be using this for the upper body spine and the lower body spine and in later tutorials when we've got the bulk of the character finished what we're going to head and do is you can almost it almost looks like the snail it almost kind of looks like the snail from this where you've got the big joint at the top like the eye so we're going to use this for those antennas that we've got and also we're going to go a step ahead and actually get the arms to drive ribbon spines on the arms so that way the arm the whole arm jo the joints that we've been setting up with the IK and the FK switch all that's going to do is be a complete driver chain to drive these spines so that way the arms are actually these really flexible spines that we can sort of create funky cartoony sort of um, bendy shapes out of and then just animate with a normal IK and FK so that way we can start to layer different rigs up, layer different deformations up and get the animator even more control so use whichever spine you prefer but for this tutorial we're going to go ahead and use the ribbon spine 